You don't serve your country, man. You serve life. You serve people. And whatever you personally can give to people. Not a country. That's secondary. There's a fellow here that had some thoughts about the country. Right. I think that uh, people ought to serve their country, not the war in Vietnam or something along those lines. And they ought to go into things like hospitals, forestry, things where this country needs them. We have hospitals all over, but they're undermanned. And we've got plenty of people oh, well, to fill them. You, got, you have a problem of business, you see. Okay, we got oil in, in, in Los Angeles spouting out of the ocean, and it's killing all sorts of sea life and everything like that. And like, but it's, it's a problem because like we need oil. Yeah, it can, and it su supplies a lot of jobs. And uh, the ocean, you just look at it, you see. False, those are accidents that happened. They're not accidents, man. They passed bills on them, and then they, they bought off the dudes to do it over again. The oil companies. You got a problem, man. You got business cats who are taught logic and not humanity. All right. That's why right. we have ghettos. It's the ruthless economic policy in this country. True, I'll agree with that. What I'm saying. So I say, don't serve that man. Serve people. Now the, the problem is, of course, is that we've been decadent so, for so long that uh, we don't realize how much power that a collective body of Christians have. Billy Graham goes to Anaheim and there's uh, 10,000 people there every night for a whole week. Uh, and every third word is Jesus. <laughs> or him. You dig? And he's getting bread. Okay. Now there's power there. Because there's need to be come together in a, in a safe situation. Those 10,000 Christians that listen to Billy Graham are getting a sense of security, they are getting a sense of praise, and they uh, if, have no reason uh, to advocate change and have good reason to militate, uh, uh, to resist change. Uh, that, uh, and I would not count on them. What do you count on? Well, I don't know who I count on. Uh, uh, to me, the majority, I'm, as I get older and older, I uh, like to think I'm getting more and more perspective, and I'm remembering a phrase that I think Alex Ham Hamilton used in uh, one of the federal papers, Federalist Papers of Jefferson, when he says, either he said or Samuel Johnson, and <laughs> they never even knew each other, the people is a monster. Censorship is a drag. I think that pornography and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and dope ought to be uh, made, um, not legalized, but uh, put into hospital type of things. I mean, we're into different things now. You got people strung out on dope, and you have uh, people in criminally insane. We're, you know, there's more to it than just ghettos, and your black problem and my white problem and things like that. We got things that are happening, man, that like are are actually putting us in a state of mind of accepting things. Like TV from the very beginning, and also public schools have been has been the great lobotomizer all all along. I mean, you sit and watch a TV, and it's uh, hypnosis. It, it works on, uh, on uh, some sort of uh, eye strain and all sorts of multi-images and everything like that. And you sit there and look at it. It doesn't matter what, what you're looking at. It's just hypnotizing you. And it isn't, it, it's, you, it's just a big thing. Anything that, that can be put in a lot of people's homes is made for bread. Now, you got people who are hip enough inside in the inner world knowing that everything in the outer world is not the world. Cars, your suit, how much perfume you wear, it, that's not the world. What's the world is what's inside and what cats have lived to pull out of themselves all through time. Tim Buckley, thank you for, for being here. Good luck on your tour and make it back to Venice, California in good health.